Welcome. A common unit in an Algebra 2 course, or maybe a pre-calculus course, is uh, the idea of fitting exponential functions to data. Uh, that is, they give kids problems of the following type. Uh, suppose they give a data of, say, a population uh, size of some culture of yeast or something. So at time t, it has a population p of t. And maybe on day 3, the uh, culture is, weighs 8 grams, and on day 7, it weighs 13 grams or something. And they ask students to find a formula of the form p is a times b to some power, to the power t that fits this data, because they uh, talk about uh, growth being basically an exponential model of some kind. So we need to find values a and b for which uh, these values uh, work. All right, well, the standard way they make kids do is just plug and chug. Let's put in uh, when t is 3, uh, the population is 8, so 8 equals a times b cubed. And when t is 7, the population is 13, so 13 equals a times b to the 7th, and solve these two equations. And, you know, the insight for kids, they've, actually, if you divide the two equations, you'll get that 13 over 8 uh, is a divided by a, and b to the 7th divided by b to the cubed is b to the 4th. So totally divided by that b is the charming number 13 eighths to the 1 4th power. And knowing that, I guess you can shove that back into this formula and work out a horrendous value for A, and I guess you're done and have something that looks completely ugly. But actually, there's a very easy way to just fit exponential functions to, to data of two points. Um, it's basically just to write it down. And to lead up how you just see what to write, uh, let me make the data set a little bit simpler first. So let's do T, population P. Let's suppose the times are day 0 is 8, and day 1 is 13. So it tells me my initial population is 8 grams, and over one day it goes up by a factor of 13 eighths. It's very easy to think of a formula that does that trick. P equals 8 times 13 eighths to the T. And check if I'm right. Put T equals 0, I'm left with P equals 8 times 0, 8. Yay. Put T equals 1, I'm left with P equals 8 times 13 over 8, which is 13. That does it. So if the uh, initial time values are very straightforward, it's very easy just to write down an answer. All right, let's go up a notch in, in difficulty. Here's time t. Let's suppose it's the same data, 8 and 13, but I slow it down by a factor of 4. Suppose it takes 4 days for my culture to reach 13 grams. So that means I need to modify this formula here and make 4, time of 4, behave like 1. Well, that's easy to write down. 8 times 13 over 8 t over 4. And check again. Put, put t equals 0. Yes, p equals 8 times 13 to the 0. 13 eighths to the 0. Does the trick. It's 8. And put t equals 4. And I get 4 over 4. Yep, that is making it behave like 1. So I get 8 times 13 over 8 is 13. Well, now we're just set. Let's go to the original data set. Let's go back to my uh, same color pen. t, p, 3 and 7, 8 and 13. It's basically the previous example. I've got it slowed down by a factor of by a factor of four, but now I want three to behave like zero. So I've got to modify this formula in such a way that t equals three is behaving like zero. Well, it's easy. P equals eight, thirteen over eight, t minus three over four will do the trick. Because check, put in t equals three, I'm getting eight times thirteen eighths to the zero. Yep. 8 again, whoops, over here, 8, and put t equals 7, 7 minus 3 is 4, over 4 is 1, so I'm getting 8 times 13, 8 to the 1, I'm getting 13 again. So there it is. And it actually is a good exercise. Do the work this hard way and see it really actually is the same answer as this. It looks ugly over here, but it turns out algebra could be the same as this guy. Uh, let's just practice a couple, one more example. Uh, the technique's kind of fun. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. It's actually great. I think pedagogically for kids, just to step back and find perspective on numbers. And, you know, one great charm of mathematics is reduce everything to an easier problem and just see that it really is an easier problem in disguise. Um, for example, suppose I gave you the data set x, y, whoops, something like, I don't know, uh, 9, 18, 20, and 5. Find an exponential graph of uh, formula that fits that data. Okay. Well, I want t equals 9 to behave like 0, and I want things to be slowed down by a factor of 11. Here goes. y must be, initial value is 18, uh, things are changing by a factor of 5 eighteenths. I want t, I want 9 to behave like 0, and I want everything to be slowed down by a factor of 11. Voila. 
So I'll leave this, uh, this uh, video with a couple of exercises for you. These are just fun ones. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm a teacher. I make you practice easier ones, uh, more standard ones first. But here's something unusual. Suppose I told you fit an exponential function to the data. 83 is 42, and 199 is also 42. What happens in that case? Or suppose I asked you fit an exponential function to the data. I know 17 is 86, and 23 is 0. What happens in that case? Try it. Play with it. Some, something fun happens. All right. There's, there's a basic unit of Algebra 2 slash precalculus in a nutshell. Thanks very much.